What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode four. Man, I can't believe I've been doing this for a month. Um, yeah. Mostly what we're going to talk about is that new 21, 2021 ZX-10R. Uh, kind of in love with that bike. But um, before we get to that, just like in episodes one, two, and three, we've got to start off with our two-stroke intro. It's just a good way to set the mood, you know? Okay, whoo, man, when he came out of that barn and was in that like sweeping left-hander with those little rollers, oh my God, he was going so fast. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Everybody should ride a two-stroke at least once in their life. It is a life-altering experience, I swear to you. All right, man, I got one little bit of news and then we're gonna jump into that ZX-10R. That thing is 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 pretty hot, but uh, before we get there, Ducati. Ducati is, um, they're spending all of their energy finding new ways to sell their V4 platform. <laughs> so, like, they've got this super Legra, right? This ultra lightweight. I also find it interesting that the super Legra makes 234 horsepower and almost 88 foot pounds of torque. Um, and then when you go over to the Penigali, we go to the V4. 214 horsepower, but more torque, 91.5 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it's just interesting. I'm not sure what the disparities are, um, why one's better than the other. But we've got the Super Legra. We've got the V4. We've got the V4S. We've got the V4R. Now they've come up with another V4 model, the V4SP, which... I remember correctly, stands for sport production, and it comes in a new paint job, black, which I think is uh, modeled after their winter testing libraries. Anywho, I just feel like Ducati is really spending more time trying to figure out how to milk the V4R platform than they are doing anything new. But that's neither here nor there. All right, man. Let's just jump right into this Kawasaki Ninja, man. This thing is awesome. Now we get a chance to take a closer look at the Ninja ZX-10R. Okay, real quickly, before we go any further, I swear to you, those glasses of water are just display props. They don't change. Take a look at them, memorize it. We'll come back to it at the end. It has 203 PS. ZX10RR has a little bit more power and produces it in a slightly different way. It's a 998cc 16 valve water cooled engine. It has uh, finger followers. That means. <laughs> all right. So, first of all, if you've seen this video before, don't worry. I'm not going to replay the whole thing and talk through it. I've just picked out a couple of small pieces here and there that I found the most interesting. And we'll start off with finger followers. Like, really? They couldn't come up with a better name than finger followers? I get it, right? They're just leaving the valves open a little bit longer, a little bit more duration. Um, sure, whatever. The valves are open longer and for greater duration. As well as that, there's things like a cassette gearbox, which is a, a racing feature. Okay, the cassette gearbox is not a new feature for 2021. They actually released that in 2016, 2017, I think it was. And it's really just, uh, as the text says, it's a racing feature. It just allows the race teams to change the inner gear ratios without changing sprockets. Because if you change sprockets, obviously you're affecting one through six, all the gears. But with this cassette gear box, they can swap ratios for just one gear for a particular section of track or something like that. I could care less about the cassette gear box. I just want to say, it's not new. It's not new. They've had it for a few years now. Slipper clutch, so an assist and slipper clutch. And it's got an up-down quick shifter. Things that you would... 
I can't believe the quick shifter is something new for 2021. Maybe the down, the the auto rev matching with the transmission. Maybe that's new this year, and they had the up before. I don't know if anybody knows. Um, leave me a, leave me something in the side chat. I'm not sure if that's a new feature this year or not. There are some day to day things that you might not expect at first. So, as, as an example, it now has cruise control, and even as a, a okay. This is awesome. Cruise control. Now, look, all of the manufacturers at this point, including Kawasaki for a few years, have had ride-by-wire. I think 2016, um, Kawasaki came out with it. Yamaha has had it for a long time. They can all do cruise control. It, the capability is there. But I don't think anybody's done it. Maybe BMW. Um, this is the first time I've heard of cruise control on a superbike, which, look... Um, you don't care about this if you're a weekend warrior track guy, but I rode my super bike to California and oh my God, I had a throttle lock. Couldn't have done it without the throttle lock, but man, this would have been nice. Cruise control. Heck yeah. I can get behind that. Accessory option. You can get heated handlebar grip. So it does combine some of life's luxuries as well as being a strong a super sport machine. <laughs> heated grips. I can get behind on. that too. One thing we really need to explore is the new aero package. There are integrated winglets on the front of the machine. These allow... Okay. Um, what's up, new biker? How you doing, man? It's pretty late over where you're at. Thanks for dropping by, man. Um, they do in some ways. They They have been far behind, far behind, but this... This 2021 is a big step forward. Uh, these integrated winglets. I actually like these a lot better than, say, for example, let's pop this, this picture of the Ducati. Now, this is their MotoGP bike, right? They don't have to follow homologation rules. They can do stupid, crazy things like double-decker layer winglets and whatnot. But I don't like the way they protrude out from the bike. Um, I really, really like the integrated design that kawasaki um went with it's i don't know i think it's pretty cool but everybody knows i'm a kawasaki geek i like kawasaki's i like them all but i like kawasaki's all right um i'm not a huge fan of the way they've opened up the nose it does resemble the h2 now i don't think the h2 really has functional winglets like this um i think that was just the way they designed the h2 they tried to give it some kind of futuristic look but this is like real no kidding functional integrated winglets wing <laughs> winglets um i like the fact that they're just not protruding out from the side that it's just kind of like hidden almost it's uh again i don't like the way they open it up but i guess you know if they're gonna put winglets on there and they're gonna go with an integrated design that's probably the only way they're gonna be able to get the air in the winglet tunnels you know it is air it to is. pass through was that's 17% more downforce due to having integrated winglets. The aerodynamic package, this takes things to another level. And on the rear seat, you'll see that that's changed the design as well. And that creates an area. Again, just like new biker was talking about, I mean, in this regard, Kawasaki is just catching up. Ducati, Yamaha have had these, these open to rear ends for a while which I guess supposedly creates some kind of low pressure behind the rider and why that's good. I have no idea, but in this area, again, they're just catching up. It's new for Kawasaki, but everybody else has already been doing it. Area of low pressure. Add to that the fact that the uh, screen is 40 millimeters higher. So the okay, again, I rode my bike 3,200 miles. That screen would have been a lot better than the one I had on the 2015. Um, the 2015, the windscreen sucks. It's like way too tiny. They didn't even bring the fairing all the way up the side. Um, they fixed that the next year in 2016, but the fact that they've got this bigger screen, 40 millimeters higher, heck yeah, man. I could totally get behind that. I like the fact that they've came out with not just racing features that are going to help Jonathan Ray win seven titles in a row, but um, they've got some really cool features for somebody who's riding on the street. I dig that rider can tuck in more with those uh, wider handlebars and essentially the whole aero package has been up, changed. it's been developed from world superbike <laughs> we're just and talking it's about a real difference to zx10r and zx10rr for 2021 okay this is my favorite part of the video 
We will take our ninja brand to the next level. We we take the ninja brand to the next level. I love the fact that they've got in like an actual Japanese Kawasaki engineer who sounds like a ninja talking about the ninja. I mean, it just adds this like level of authenticity to the video. Um, you know, I got to think they could have found somebody. I mean, this guy speaks really good English, right? I, I mean, I only speak one language and I'm, I'm sucky at that. So kudos to this guy being able to speak uh, English as well as he has. He just has this like really deep, heavy accent. And I just got to think like whoever produced this video probably had multiple people to choose from. And I'm sure in that group of people to choose from, there was somebody who could speak English as good as this guy, but without the heavy accent. And the producer's like, no, I, I don't. I don't. I want the ninja one. <laughs> anyway, I just think it's cool. So let's listen. And engineering updates to both the Ninja ZX-10R and the Ninja ZX-10R R. The Ninja ZX-10R and R R have carried riders to over 120 win in World Superbike races. Okay. That's true. Kawasaki has 120 wins. But um, they almost need to take off the S when they say carried riders. Let me explain. We, 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 cannot, we cannot move forward without clarification. It's, it's a little bit misleading. Jonathan Ray. Here's the deal. Jonathan Ray has 99 of those 120 plus wins. Um, I'm pretty sure he's at 99. I think at the end of the season, he was trying hard to get number 100 because, I mean, look, uh, 100 wins. That would have been awesome. Um, but if I remember correctly, he crashed. He was trying so hard. And he did not achieve win 100 at the end of the season. Uh, we could see, if you go all the way down to the bottom, that's this past season, which just ended. And uh, he went 4-4, four, 5-14. Four, and 14th. Um, he did not get Mr. 100, the elusive 100. But for all practical purposes, almost 100 of the 120 wins came from one rider and essentially one team, the core of the team, you know, your electrical engineers and suspension engineers. The core guys, they've been together, I think, through all six of Jonathan Ray's titles. So it's a little bit misleading because it's all mostly recent wins. And to add to that, Jonathan Ray is not the only guy, right? We're talking 120 plus wins. So who's the other guy? Well, Jonathan Ray had this teammate. His name was Tom Sykes. And Tom Sykes was um, Ray's teammate through, I think, 2015, 2016, 2017. And then I think 2018, he went to BMW, something like that, maybe 2019. Um, but Tom Sykes, you can see right here around 2014, he started riding for Kawasaki. He almost won the title that year. He lost the title by six points, I think it was. But in that one season, he's got two, four, six, eight wins, right? And he's got wins kind of scattered about through 2017. So I think between those two guys, Jonathan Ray and Tom Sykes, in the last four or five years, have gathered... Um, 119 of those 120 plus wins. Um, the other rider that's gotten um, wins and a championship on Kawasaki in World Superbike was none other than Mr. Scott Russell back in like 91, 92. So anyway, it is what it is. Still no semi-active suspension though. Don't care much though. I'm too decrepit. <laughs> I agree with you, new biker. Um, they don't have any like electronic suspension, but I don't know. I don't think Jonathan Ray needs it. Yamaha has had it for a while. They can't win a championship. Ducati, I think, has it. BMW's had it. I mean, D BMW is like the pioneer of modern electronics in in the superbikes. Hachui, what's up? Good day. Good day to you, sir. How you doing? How's the weather down under? All right, let's continue on. I don't think there's much left. Since 2011, Road or Race, there is only one choice. Ninja from Kawasaki. There's only one choice. Ninja. Thank you. And let the good times roll. You did very well, my friend. You did very well. It's got a different dashboard as well for this year, right? Yeah, the TFT meter is different. It's really clear and easy to understand. The good thing. Oh, thank God for this. Uh, new biker, here's another area where Kawasaki is like way behind on their super bikes. They've had that 
that display you see in uh, on my bike on uh, anytime I do a street moto vlog. They've had that for years. And you know what? When it first came out, it was probably pretty cool. Um, but like Honda updated the CBR just a couple of years ago with their with their all new model. Same with Suzuki a couple of years ago with the GSXR. Yamaha's had an awesome display for years. Ducati's had them. Um, BMW's had them. Triumph's got some really slick displays. If you ever go watch any of the videos from, oh gosh, Hippo Drones. Yeah, sometimes he's out on his Triumph Triple and uh, that thing's got a beautiful display. Finally, Kawasaki has, uh, Kawasaki's caught up to everybody else with the dash. And I love the fact that they've got the same programmable ride modes where you can configure everything and you can have a track mode you can have an aggressive track road a wet mode you know it's fully configurable and that's to me the proper way to do it thing is is when you're concentrating on your road riding or even in track use if you go to a track day you can see it very clearly in your peripheral vision all right man that's the end of the pieces i cut out of the full video um I will put a link in the description of this stream once uh, YouTube does its thing. Um, I'll put a link so if you guys want to go back and watch the full video, you can do that. Um, but I don't know. What do you guys think, man? Uh, I think New Biker's right. Yeah, everyday road use. I hear you. I mean, I, I don't. I haven't been on a track in a long time. I did a couple of years of road racing on my Suzuki GSXR 600. Um, but I like, I haven't done a track day. I haven't been on a track with a street bike in years. So I, I don't care about some of those features. I care about the cruise control, the heated grips, the higher windshield. I don't care about the integrated winglets. Um, I like the way they did it. I like the fact that they're integrated instead of those things that stick way out the side. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm more concerned with everyday use stuff as well. I don't really care about electronic suspension. Maybe if I start doing track days again or something, I'll, I'll care more. But this is a picture of Jonathan Ray's 2015 winning motorcycle, I think it was. So um, five years old, but you can kind of see how the front doesn't have any kind of aerodynamics. It's all solid right there. So I don't know. Kawasaki, I think the ZX-10 is one of the best looking sport bikes out there. So, guys, that's uh, all I've got for this live stream. Thanks for dropping in. Thanks for joining. And uh, as usual, keep the rubber side down. Have a good one. Um, if you guys have any ideas for topics in future live streams, let me know. I do these every Saturday, 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And yeah, leave a leave a comment once the video is available. And uh, We'll see you guys in the next one, man. Take it easy. Thanks for dropping by. Hi, Chewy. Yeah, it is bloody hot. Me too. Me too. I love the ZX-10s. New biker voices. Everybody in the side chat, appreciate it. Thank you. And I uh, hope to see everybody next Saturday. Bye.